Hello, I'm David Byes, your MSU Extension State Health Specialist, back with you in our series of conversations about COVID-19. Today, I have my colleague, Dr. Jason Barrett, with me to talk about water and public utilities, which is something that may seem a bit unusual for one of these conversations, but as you'll learn, it actually has great relevance for what we're all going through. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you all for having me. So, uh, Jason, I was going to give a little bit of your background, but why don't you tell our viewers about what you do and, and how you got to where you are? Well, I tell you, in short, um, when I came back to Mississippi State University, uh, had an undergrad in, in ag economics, went to work for the ag economics department and the projects they had were dealing with public water supplies and fast forward 14 years and now we're, you know, still working with public water supplies and uh, public wastewater systems in Mississippi. That's great. And I love, I've heard you tell before that you've actually got wastewater certifications um, in addition to the doctoral background and public policy. So you really bring both sides of the spectrum to this. And I, I always love hearing your story and your background and the way that your, your paths, the different paths you've walked have kind of woven together to give you the expertise to do what you do now. So thanks for sharing that. Tell us uh, in a general sense, how are the water and wastewater utilities responding to COVID-19? Well, to understand that impact, and it's one of the first things that came to my mind when this whole pandemic came out, I guess, before it was even considered a pandemic, I guess, uh, water and wastewater utilities are, are vitally essential. Uh, and depending on the size and classification of the utility, whether it's water or wastewater, you know, they've got to have somebody there daily, if not 24 seven, at least once or twice a week. So all of those utilities must carry on regardless of what's going on around them. So when we start talking about essential employees, certified water and certified wastewater employees are very essential uh, for those utilities, as well as every citizen out there, uh, because they're using those utilities every single day. Well, you, you know, you and I have talked about this before. You bring a public policy background and I'm a public health geek, I like to say. And, and I, you know, there's nothing more central to public health than, than safe drinking water and clean water in general. So you're, you're absolutely right that water's essential for us. Um, and I, I would just follow up to ask with heightened awareness um, and people staying at home more, what can we say about tap water and the safety of drinking water from a public utility? Well, you know, I've always been a champion for public utilities, water and wastewater, and especially uh, from tap water. When we start thinking about a public water utility, we, th we start thinking about tap water. Uh, mm -hmm. Public water supplies provide water to people's faucets that is drinking water quality 24 uh, seven. And they do it at such a low, low cost here in Mississippi. I mean, you know, the average citizen may see anywhere from $2.50 to $4.50 for a thousand gallons. I mean, just think about that quantity, 1000 gallons of drinking water to your faucet, you know, unlimited, you know, every, when you need it, uh, it's such a small price. Uh, but also thinking about the, the security of that. I mean, you have state and federal regulations which fall on these public water supplies. So they're having to follow those constantly uh, as far as the treatment and checking, uh, monthly samples to the state health department, uh, it's a very rigorous process to make sure that the quality is there. Uh, so I always urge citizens to to have peace and, and know that there is safety in their tap water at the price uh, versus spending, you know, upwards of two dollars for a 20 ounce bottle of water, you know, at a convenience store. Uh, so you can buy, buy a whole lot of water from public utility for Yes. You, you pay it a, that's a gas no tax. That's wild. Uh, what are, tell us a little bit more about what public utilities are facing during the pandemic. Well, one of the biggest things we've seen over the last couple of weeks is mainly from a cash flow standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right out of the gate in, in mid March, uh, Mississippi Public Service Commission uh, had a, an order basically saying there would be no cutoffs on public utilities, at least for 60 days, which is a great thing. Cause again, when people are having to wash their hands excessively and we need clean and we need safety uh, and we need drinking water, uh, that's a great thing. I mean, customers are still required to pay their utility bill. They can, 
but they've asked the utilities not to do their customary monthly cutoffs. Uh, so when we start thinking about that as one thing that could potentially reduce revenues for utility. And then we also think about uh, people not being in their places of business. So you also start thinking about reductions in revenue for public utilities. Uh, and this, this kind of tags on to what I was talking about as far as the cost of water and water supply. Uh, when you have water utilities that usually run a very tight budget, uh, very thin margins, uh, and then all of a sudden you reduce that revenue or greatly reduce it really quickly, uh, it, can, it can cause a kind of a financial strain on public utilities. So for one, you know, just understanding that piece of it. And then also, I think it'll be kind of an eye opener for utilities to start thinking about their days of cash on hand. How much do we have? You know, are we trying to stay between that 285 days and, and you know, 415 days uh, window that we really need to have? Lots to think about. Uh, certainly for the utilities. What about citizens? What about the, the average Joe like me out there that what do I need to know about what's going on at, you know, Starkville utilities here and, and the water that I'm getting or, you know, my folks, I grew up out in Rankin County on a rural water supply. What are the average Joe folks need to know about public utilities during the pandemic? Well, right now I'd say kind of two things are, are going on for one with the increased amount of people being at home using water. Uh, again, most systems are, are very comfortable with their, their operations and their staffing. So when you increase the amount of flow, you start increasing kind of the workload on the current staff that's there. And then on the wastewater side, it's one thing we really haven't touched. Uh, a lot more people at home, a lot more people using sanitary supplies, uh, creating, this is creating a lot more of a, of a kind of a strain or work on our public wastewater systems as they're kind of having to deal with with clogs and lift stations and lines. Uh, so just to understand right now, uh, even though they are very essential, they're probably overworked as anybody. Uh, so they're not able to meet those those uh, usual uh, demands that they had. So right now, even though they're they are doing what they need to be doing in supplying these services, uh, they may not be as responsive as they have in the past just because of the workload that's increased on them. So be understanding with your public utility. That's what I would ask. That's great. Good insight. Uh, we don't, you know, like I said at the beginning, we don't necessarily see the connection between these public utilities and COVID-19, but it's good to be reminded of the importance of just showing a little grace. to the That's right. That's yeah. this time. So this has been super, Jason. And, you know, one thing I failed to mention at the beginning is that this is, was it National Wastewater Week? Is, or excuse me, National Water Water Quality Week? Tell me the... the National Drinking Water Week. Drinking yeah. Water Week. That's right. Right. So yeah, man. good time for us to be having this conversation. What are the, you know, two or three things, if, if you've watched or viewers have watched before, they know my, they know my MO. Uh, I like to end giving our guests a chance to leave our viewers with those last, those two or three takeaways. What would you leave us with? Number one, I would say, uh, don't hesitate to call your public utility. That's what they're there for. And a lot of times they only get information if it's given to them by customers out in the field. So don't hesitate to call your public utility one that's there for. Uh, two, I would say, don't flush anything down a toilet or a drain, except possibly human waste uh, or wastewater or toilet paper. That's it. Don't flush anything else down. It just creates more headache down the road for utility people. Uh, and then also uh, be wise with your money. Uh, you know, there were, there was a lot of money spent years ago on creating public water supplies to provide safe drinking water to your tap. Use it. Don't, 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 uh, I'm, I hate to say waste. That's not the right word, but just be wise with your money. If you need to buy a bottle of water, make sure it's for the right calls. Uh, trust your public utility. Good takeaways. Thank you again so much for joining us today, Jason and, and viewers. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, man. Glad to be here. Thank you all for having me. A absolutely. And folks, you know, why don't you get up right now and go get you a glass of water from the tap. I'm, I'm drinking some straight from the tap today. And uh, that's, that's my habit. And I encourage you to do the same as Jason has just encouraged us to do. Drop us a line in the comments about what you found helpful or what ideas you have for future episodes of conversations about COVID-19. We've got 
a breadth of expertise here at Mississippi State University as well as outside of the university. And I'm happy to bring guests on the show to help answer questions that you might have. Thanks again for joining us today. And as always, I encourage you to stay vigilant and stay healthy. Thank you.